All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, transformations, but uh, in particular translations, which are um, kind of like slides uh, in the plane. So transformations provide us with the tools really to move objects around in space. Um, a transformation is the most general, um, and it's a mapping or a, um, a you know, cause and effect that changes the position the shape or the size of the figure. Okay, so we can kind of see an example here. We see a flip happening here. This would be a reflection of the domino. Uh, we see a slide, which is a translation, and a turn, which is a rotation. Um, and we'll always call the original figure. So this one is called the, uh, the pre-image. And the final figure is called the image. Okay. So with this example here, we see that we've slid this figure uh, this way. So its position has changed, but the, the size and shape seems to say it's the same. So this little arrow means that it's been transformed into another uh, shape, or in this case, just moved. Um, so the pre-image is the before and the image is after and that's what these prime marks are normally for uh, like for example e goes to e prime so prime is kind of like after okay the image of f is angle f prime and uh, gh becomes g prime h prime okay so line segment gh becomes line segment g prime h prime okay um, and overall it looks like that transformation was a slide okay but we could also have this where the pre-image is the before and the after is still a triangle um, angle p becomes angle p prime and we can see that because um, corresponding, right? Like they both are first, right? So P becomes P prime and R prime. Um, oops, sorry. RT, this right here eventually turns into this R prime T prime. So to move this one, we could think, okay, so we have our original, maybe we could like rotate it this way like that but see how it doesn't no matter what way I turn this it doesn't really line up in there but we could do that and then we could kind of flip it down so it's actually a series of multiple transformations um, there okay um, now a rigid motion is what we're going to be focusing on for um, the first part of transformations that we'll learn this year and a rigid motion is rigid meaning that the shape before and after did not change um, size or shape. So it preserves the lengths and the shape. And shape is really angle measures. So this one right here, it looks like maybe we could reflect it, um, but it looks like the, the, the lengths, like this length here, Looks like it's about the same as this length. This one matches this one, you see. So these, this appears to be a rigid motion because we can literally cut it out in a sheet of paper and move it from the pre-image to the image. Um, whereas this one, it's clear to see that those squares have different side lengths. So the size changed. And no. So another example of a not a rigid motion would be something like this diamond shape becoming like this diamond shape. Like all the lengths might be the same, but one of them, um, um, maybe we need, you know, the shape can change. You know, it could be something like this that doesn't quite, like these are could be the same, but um, the angles are different. Um, so it's got to be, you got to have both of them preserved. Um, so this would be also no. It's not a great picture, but uh, size can stay the same 
and it, but if the angle measure is changed, then it's it's no good. Like imagine if it turned turned to this, but these are right angles, right? That's different. Um, but for this video, we're going to talk about translations a bit more. So, um, in the notation, so a translation maps all the points of a figure, um, the same distance. So they slide the same distance in the same direction. Okay. Uh, translation changes the position of a figure, but preserves its shape and size. Okay. So two ways to denote translation, because we got to give it some way to show um, what direction it's going and, and how the x value is changing and the y value is changing. So the translation notation looks like this, um, where it's got T, capital T, and then this little part here, which is called a vector. And it's it's a arrow. It shows us where to go. Um, so for example, if we had T and then negative 5, 2, this would means this means to translate a figure uh, left five units and up two units. So if we had a figure here and a figure here, so this was our pre image and this was our image. It would be just saying, hey, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, or I think it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then up two. So it's really just a, that is, it's called a vector or an arrow that shows the change. Okay. And negative means left, positive means right, you know, up is positive, and so on. But you could also talk about that same translation with coordinate notation, which for this example over here, it would just look like this instead. You would do x minus 5 and y plus 2. Yeah, and that's the same for both. So it's just a different way to write it. Um, this is really, I like this one better when we do points, like we have individual points. And this one's a bit better when you're talking about it as a whole. Um, like, what is happening? Um, and it's a translation, a T, um, along some arrow. Okay. Let's go ahead and try. Um, we got a couple more here. So I'm going to go ahead and label uh, this one. So we got that, B, and C here. And then we're told how to translate. So it wants us to go right one and down four. Okay. So right one, down one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And that's B prime. So we, we start at C, we go right and then down one, two, three, four. That's C prime. One, one, two, three, four. And that's A prime. Okay, so if you have two colors or a pencil and a pen, it's kind of good to maybe use uh, both of those here. So the new vertices are A prime, which is negative one, negative two. If we kind of look at this point right here, B prime ended up being two minus three, and C prime ended up being one, negative five. Okay. Um, the coordinate rule, if we wanted to write it that way, you would just follow the same rules. Okay, we got to go right one, so x has to be increased by one, and y has to be decreased by four. So if we look, I also like to look, if you want to study one point, it can kind of give a lot of guidance on what happens when we when we translate. Um, a goes to A prime, right? A prime is the image. And we see that 
this happened. That was the before and after. And then you could sit you can sit down and say, well, well, what happened here? Well, we added one to the X and we subtracted four from the Y. That's all these two things are saying, just different ways. Okay? Let's do it uh, one more time. So we got two shapes here. We got N, or is that N? Yeah, N, I, L, and E. And then we need to move it uh, in this way. So it's going to be left three, so back three, and up two. Back three, up two, that's L prime. Back three, up two, that's I prime. Okay. Back, so from E, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, so you can kind of see the vertices. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and list them, but I want you to kind of go in between the the picture and the points I'm writing down. So n prime is at negative one, negative three, negative one, four, negative six, six, all the way in the corner, and negative six, negative one. Those are the four points that have been transformed, translated, really. Um, so the coordinate rule again, is instead of writing it as a vector like that, um, which by the way, that vector right there is this arrow right here. It's from pre-image to image. It, sh it shows where do you go in the plane to get there. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, you, you go back three and then you add two to this one. Um, if we had a picture of a translation, notice that P goes to P prime. That's what it says. So I know all the points are going to be moved the same way. So if I just go ahead and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2. I can write down my big T notation, which is just going to be, I'm going to move 8 on the left and right and then go and go down too. So that's it. That's all you got to do. Or so that's the translation notation or remember the coordinate notation is xy becomes x plus 8 and y minus 2. All right, let's have this be the last one, all right? Um, so it doesn't give us a picture, but it does give us one point and its image after its pre-image. So the difference here looks to be that we take away five and that we add seven. So when I write my rule in coordinate notation, not big T notation, I think we need to subtract 5 from x and add 7 to, to y. Okay. So now it's saying, hey, well, let's say you knew the other points of that triangle. Where do they go? Okay. Well, they're going to go to h prime and i prime. And we're going to follow the rule, which says to um, take away 5 and add 7. So take away 5, add 7, would give me that, right? Take away 5 first and add 7. Okay? And we could also write this rule like this. You should be comfortable going in between those two. 
Okay, and then this problem is just a fun example to show that you can have multiple transformations of this chess piece and they could also be described by um, a combination of the two.